All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Joe with UW Safety. This is my partner, Don. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a brief introduction to using the fire extinguishers that we have on campus. Now, let me start off by saying, at no point are you ever required to grab a fire extinguisher and use it. What we're doing today is giving you the basic knowledge and the proper procedure in the event that you discover a fire, you can make the decision then and there if it's the proper thing to do to grab the extinguisher or simply get yourself out. And there is nothing wrong with getting yourself out safely. But today what we're gonna do is gonna give you some practice, have you go through, actually use a fire extinguisher. We're gonna put out a, a, a fire at the end and so you guys have the experience of actually using it. But again, thing is, safety is the number one priority as we're going through this. Now, the main extinguisher that we have on campus is what we call an ABC 10 pound dry chemical extinguisher. The reason we call this an ABC dry chemical is because this is going to work on all three classes of fire. Now when you walk down the hallways, you're going to see extinguishers about every 75 feet. It does not matter where you go and what building on campus, every 75 feet you should find one of these in the hallway. And what this means on here is this is going to work on three different classes of fire. First class of fire we have is what we call a class A fire. Wood, paper, plastic, things that burn that leave an ash residue. So anything that burns with that ash residue is considered a class A fire. When we go and use this extinguisher, what's going to happen is, is the powder is going to come out, it's going to go into the fire, and it's actually going to stop the chain reaction of the fire. Not only is it going to put the flames out, but it's going to put a coating over those ashes and embers so the air can't come back in and rekindle and start that fire all over again. Works very, very well. This extinguisher right here is equivalent to about eight gallons of water. So very, very good at what it does for fighting that class A fire. Second class of fire is what we call a class B fire. And a class B fire is designated by the burning gasoline can. Wood, uh, excuse me, gas, propane, oils, solvents, alcohols, things along those lines, flammable liquids. Now in many cases, it's not the liquid itself that's burning, but the vapors that are given off by these liquids. And when this vapor cloud ignites, it ignites very fast and burns very, very hot. We can use the exact same extinguisher, have it go in there, stop the chain reaction, puts the fire all the way out. Now when you're dealing with a class B fire, you have to remember, if it was a spill and it ignited and you got the flames all the way out, in many cases that spill is still there, so those vapors are still present. So you want to be aware of that thing to make sure that that doesn't reignite. So again, safety is the number one priority. And the third class of fire we have is what we call a class C fire. It's designated by the burning electrical plug. Now it's not the electricity that's burning, but somewhere in the fire process we have a live electrical source. And if the chemical comes in contact with that live electricity, it's non, the chemical is non-conductive, so it won't come back to you, you know, and give you a, an electrocution hazard by using this. So main extinguisher we have around campus we'll call an ABC dry chemical. You see these everywhere you go working down the hallways. Work very, very simple. Now in some of the other areas we have a couple of different extinguishers. In a lot of the lab areas we have what we call a carbon dioxide extinguisher. Now carbon dioxide extinguishers are very easy to tell because they look a little bit different and they have a horn on them instead of a hose. This is what we call a five pound carbon dioxide extinguisher. Now the reason we call it a five pound extinguisher is because it's got five pounds of carbon dioxide gas in it. Okay? That doesn't take into account the metal shell around it, which is going to add about another seven to ten pounds. So again, there's a little bit of weight to this. Now if you look at the label on this one, you'll see that that, that class A symbol is crossed all the way off. And the reason this does not have a class A rating is if you would use it on a, on a trash can fire, for example, it would put the flames out momentarily because it starves the fire of oxygen, but then because it's a carbon dioxide gas, it's going to dissipate back into the atmosphere the air can come back to those ashes and embers and rekindle that fire. If it's the only extinguisher you have around and you feel safe doing it, go ahead and use it. But again, safety is the number one priority. So if you get into the labs and you see a carbon dioxide extinguisher, these are in there for the very reason is that the gas dissipates and doesn't leave any residue around. So it's our clean agent of choice as we're going around. Now in some of the other labs, what we're going to have, we're going to have a little bit bigger carbon dioxide extinguisher. And again, very, very different from the ABC dry chemical, but again, same thing. It's got the no class A symbol on it, just a lot bigger. It's got 10 pounds of gas into it. So two main types of extinguishers, 
dry chemical, carbon dioxide. When you go to use a fire extinguisher again, as I said at the beginning, safety is, <clears throat> excuse me, safety is the number one priority. If you don't feel comfortable, get yourself out. Now, a couple of things that you have to do before you use a fire extinguisher. If you discover a fire extinguisher, yell fire. Let everybody around you know that you have a situation that needs to be deal dealt with. Second thing, have somebody call 911 or you call 911 and have them pull the fire alarm. By activating the fire alarm, what you're doing is you're letting the rest of the building know we have a situation. The other thing is you're going to get a direct line to the fire department that they can get the fire trucks rolling. Again, we want to err on the side of safety, so always, always, always keep yourself safe. Now, after you have done those and you're taking a look at the fire and you decide, hey, I think I can put this out, what you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to grab a fire extinguisher. When you grab a fire extinguisher, you're going to take it off the wall off the wall, out of the cabinet, off the hook, you're going to carry it by the bottom handle. And as you're coming up to the fire, you're going to stop anywhere from 8 to 12 feet. The number one rule that people um, disregard when they use an extinguisher is they get too close. They think the closer I get, the faster the fire is going to go out. So what we want to do is we want to keep back 8 to 12 feet. The reason being is this extinguisher is pressurized to 195 pounds per square inch. If you come up to that burning trash can, Take this hose, stick it in the trash can, and activate it at 195 pounds. You've just created one of those school project erupting volcanoes. Okay? So again, you want to make sure that you keep that safe distance back of 8 to 12 feet. So you have a safe distance away from the fire. Second thing that you're going to do is you're always going to have a safe exit at your back. Just in case you can't get the fire out, you can get yourself out safely. So as you do that, you got a safe distance, you got a safe exit. Then what you're going to do, now you're finally going to be able to use this thing. And when we go to use the extinguisher, we use a little thing we call pass. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. So the first thing we're talking about is pull. And what we're talking about is pulling the pin. This pin right here is the safety device in here. As long as that's in there, we can squeeze all day. Nothing's going to happen. Pin is held in place by his tamper seal. What's going to happen is we've got to get rid of the tamper seal. Now, when people have never done this before, they always have a hard time getting rid of this. Easiest way to get rid of the tamper seal, simply take this ring right here, give a little twist like starting the key to your car, the seal comes all the way off, done what it has to do, and then without putting your hand on the top handle, slide the pin all the way out. Once the pin is all the way out, you've accomplished step one. You have crossed the letter P off of the pass. Now what's going to happen as you're doing this, a lot of times, is the adrenaline starts flowing, people break the seal, they have this, and they try doing this and this, and they can't get it out. If you can't get it out, remember, pull the pin all the way out, leave go of the top handle. Once the top handle's all the way out, the pin is out, you're then going to take the hose, and you're going to aim down at the base of the fire. We're not worried about the smoke and the flames up here. We want to get down to where that fire's actually starting. Stop that chain reaction in its spot. So aim low. Then you're going to take the handles and squeeze all the way together does not matter if it's a big extinguisher, small extinguisher, squeeze these handles all the way together. Now there is a spring in here and these handles can be a little bit difficult to squeeze together. A little technique that we can use to get rid of it is if you set the extinguisher on the ground, pull the pin, free up the hose with one hand, take your other hand, put your palm on it, lean into it with your body, wait to compress the handles. Once that is done, the extinguisher is going to be coming out. You can then take it and pick it up and then go from there. So again, you want to pull, aim, squeeze, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to sweep side to side. By sweeping side to side, what we're doing is we're getting that chemical all the way around that fire to get it all the way out. Start to finish, this extinguisher is going to be empty in 20 seconds. Does not sound like a lot of time, but in most cases, it's more than enough time to get out a small to medium sized fire. If you think the fire's too big, it is too big. Don't attempt it. Get yourself out, close the door, activate the fire alarm, call 911, let the fire department come in. But again, you have to make the decision right then and there if it's the right thing to do. So, safe distance, safe exit, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Questions on anything that we've gone over so far? Okay, now, when you go to use a carbon dioxide extinguisher, we're going to do the same thing. Pull the pin, we're going to aim. Now, what we're going to do here on the difference is because this comes out as carbon dioxide gas, the five-pound extinguisher is designed to be basically a one-handed operation. 
What we don't want you to do is we don't want you grabbing onto this because as the carbon dioxide gas comes out, it's actually going to be creating dry ice. This is going to get started to frost it up. So as you can see, the horn stays up when you put it in this position. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep back and forth. Inside, these things work great. Okay? Outside, because it is a gas, it goes into the fire, starves it of oxygen. They don't work so well, so we may have to get a little bit closer than the distance we were talking about to put the fire all the way out. But again, it's the same thing. Pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Once you get the fire all the way out, what we want you to do is we want you to back away from the fire. If you cannot get the fire all the way out, use that safe exit at your back, close the door, get yourself out safely. So, when you go to use these, keep yourself safe as the number one priority. Second thing is, know where at least three extinguishers are. Okay? When you get back into the building, take a look around. When Don and I come through, we have about 11,000 extinguishers on campus that we have to check. We go in the lab sometimes, they're usually right by the door. They make great coat hangers. Okay? Don't do it. Don't hang your lab coat on them. Keep them accessible. Know where they are. The other thing is, if for some reason that you do happen to use an extinguisher, please give us a call. Every extinguisher has a white tag on it. Don's number's on there, my number's on there. Give us a call, let us come back in. That's what our responsibilities are, to make sure that you guys always have a safe extinguisher for you to use, okay? So again, we want you to make sure that you're gonna be safe as you're going through this. So, when you go through, keep yourself safe, know where they are, go through the steps. Today what we're doing is we're gonna give you a chance to actually use one of these on a gasoline, on a flammable liquid fire. Then once you get the fire all the way out, you guys are gonna be trained you know, to use them properly. Now, not only do these work the same way here, but if you have extinguishers at home or in your apartment, the exact same thing. So, all right. Any questions on anything we've gone over? Okay, one of those? You already pulled the pin, you pass that part. All right, squeeze those handles all the way together. Back and forth, side to side, edge to edge, all the way across. Beautiful. Wow, nice. There you go, nicely done. Nicely that hose done. with the one end, there you go. Lean into it, that's it. Back and forth, side to side, edge to edge, all the way across, nice. Just how it should be done. Very, very good. Oh, carbon dioxide. Pull the pin all the way out. Come on up here a little bit closer. We're going to come right over here. All right, whenever you're ready, take those things, squeeze it all the way together. Back and forth, side to side. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. And again, the carbon dioxide's not going to have any residue left behind, but as you can see, it's going to take a little bit longer to get the fire all the way out. But again, nicely done. Yep, that's it. Pull the pin all the way out. Hose comes out sideways to the left. Take a little step to your left this way. The wind's kind of shifting on us a little bit. All right, whenever you're ready, take those handles, squeeze them all the way. Together. That's it. Back and forth. That's it. Go up a little bit higher with it. There you go. That's it. And leave going. Back away. That's it. That's okay, it. see how the sound, the pitch changed on it? That thing's starting to be on empty. If you hear that sound, the fire's still going, use that safe exit on your way out. Anybody else? What we're doing? All right. Again, two types of extinguishers, ABC dry chemical, wood, paper, pyre, wood, paper, plastic, and trash, flammable liquids, safe to use around electrical, carbon dioxide extinguishers, clean agent of choice, pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. As we tell all of our classes, you guys did a great job. Hopefully, you never have to use any of this information. You guys did a great job. Enjoy yourself. Have a safe summer. Now back to work. It's Friday.